G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today we're running through a tutorial in Dynamo for Autodesk Revit. So we're going to look at applying revisions to sheets using Dynamo scripting. So the function that we're going to build today basically adds or removes revisions uh, from multiple sheets in a Revit model. So for context, we've basically got a project that we'll be working in. This is the Autodesk uh, basic sample project, and we've got a bunch of sheets in our browser. And I've just added a few revisions to the project so that we have a few to pick from. So currently all these sheets have no revisions applied at the moment, uh, but we're going to apply them using our script. And we're going to be using Dynamo, so that's the version that I'm running in at the moment for anyone that wants to follow along with the tutorial at home. And we're going to be using some custom nodes today as well, just to take a few shortcuts, um, which I always recommend people do if they're newer to Dynamo or if they're not familiar with Python scripting. So we're going to be using one from Archilab to get all the revisions in the project. Um, we're going to be using one from Zebra to retain the old status of an if function uh, to basically run one or the other as an option. Um, and then we're going to be using the two nodes from Bakery, which are basically critical to how this script runs, which are add and remove revisions from sheet. Uh, we're also going to be using some custom nodes to build a U UI or a user interface in order to enhance the user experience of the script. Um, this is a new package I've been experimenting with lately and I found this really enhances how users can engage with Dynamo scripts. Um, basically what it does is it brings up an interface. Uh, so these particular three nodes are going to be used to build an overall user interface that looks something like this. Um, and this is what the user sees in order to run the script. Uh, so it's a lot more um, enhanced than Dynamo Player. And obviously both of those options are much better than just out of the box scripting. So without further ado, we'll actually make the script itself. Um, so if I just go on my Revit model, I'm just gonna open up Dynamo and we'll just start the script off. So I guess once it loads, we're basically gonna set up our import or our input nodes and our output nodes. So ultimately what we're aiming to do is get to add and remove revisions from sheet. So I'll just find that one. So we've got get all revisions um, from Archilab as well. So I'll grab that one while I'm at it and we'll get uh, revisions add and remove from sheet. And revisions to sheet and remove revisions from sheet. And I like to start most of my scripts this way as well because um, it's, it's an easier way to begin and uh, finish the process. It lets you visually map out what you're going to be doing as well. And midway along, we're going to be using the data shapes package in order to build up a UI as well. And we're going to need a few components to build that UI. So I'll just show you the UI package itself as it comes, because it does have quite a few UI options. So one thing we're going to need is a, we'll have a, I think, a drop down data. And that is to select our revision. We'll have a list view as well. And that's basically the combo boxes that will let us pick the sheets that we want to apply it to. And I think that the other node that we'll be using is the radio buttons data in this case, which is basically uh, choosing whether we're going to add or remove. Okay, so from there, we're going to start getting some of our inputs. So we're going to go to manual mode just so that the script isn't constantly running. And we're going to get the names of all the revisions. Uh, and you'll see why in a second we're doing that because basically we need to build up a drop down list of elements for revisions. So each part of the UI script basically relies on what it calls keys and values. So a key is what it's showing you for the name of what you're picking, but the value is what it's really pushing through from your selection. You can make input names as well. So we can say this is revision to apply. And in the UI, this is what it will name that particular portion of the UI. So our key is going to be the name of the revision and our value is going to be the revision itself. So you can see how I've sort of connected those up to achieve that. Usually default index can be zero. And I usually recommend that you sort your data because typically that will apply alphabetic or numerical sequencing, which is easier for a user to understand when they see a list. So that's one component of our UI that we've built there. So what we'll do is we'll just block that off as a portion of our script and we'll just call that UI revisions. The next thing we'll need is our sheets. So we're gonna get all sheets. So we're gonna do a category by name and we'll use a string to name the category as sheets. And we're gonna to wanna to also get all elements of category as well in order to collect all our sheets. 
There we go. For some reason, that node's always quite far down the list, even if you type it in exactly as it needs to be. And so that would be our sheets that are going to be output here, but we're also going to get their name and their number. So we're going to use the sheet name and sheet number node. You could also use get parameter value by name as well at this point if you wanted to, but I find that this node is easier to work with. Okay, so we've got those. And we're going to apply a common function to them as well. So we're going to use a list combine to apply a function to build the sheet name of each of these sheets. So we're going to take the sheet name and the sheet number, and we're going to apply a common separator to them as well. So we're going to combine these two particular lists. So we'll take that and that, and our combinator is going to be string join. And we're going to join these two, which are being fed in as our lists already up here. And our separator in this case will be just a, a dash. And in a second, I'll run this just to show you what we've built so far. Okay, so this would basically give us our, our key, which is this, this name, and it will also give us our sheets themselves, which we're feeding through. So in this case, our keys will be, will be the name, and our values will be the sheets themselves. At this point, these, some components of the UI actually let you give them a size um, when it's a list. So the way that a drop-down list works or a, a combo list works is that it tells you how much room you want to be able to have before your scroll bar has to take effect. Um, so essentially, I'll just go back to the UI so you can see what I mean. So you can see there's scroll bars that activate depending on how wide or high your UI is. And you usually want to fix the size of these so that it leaves room for the rest of your components in your script. So I'm just going to say in this case that the height is 300. And there are a lot of other options here that we're not going to use today, um, such as being able to select model elements and views and uh, display, only display things instead of running this through the UI itself. And we're not going to show the count, default values in the C. Typically, I guess in this case, it can just be zero. Again, we can sort items as well. Um, we're not going to show the ID of elements in this case, but if you ever had things that could potentially say the same thing as a UI option, you would need to activate this so that they don't get confused as to being a double up of data. Okay, so we're just going to say that it's true that we want to sort items. Okay, so we've got a UI list here as well. You'll notice I haven't really been running the script too frequently yet. That's because I sort of know what I'm doing and I sort of want to show you, I guess, how this all comes together in a UI first. So we have our sheets at that point. Now the last thing we need from this is our two boxes to say whether we're adding or removing, the sh removing them. So we're gonna use a code block to build most of this. So our input name is add or remove. This is the name of our, our button in our UI. We use semicolons, go to a new line. So our keys in this case, we're gonna do a list and that will be add and remove. So we're building a list by using square brackets in this case. And our values are going to be the Boolean functions of true or false. And our default value index uh, in this case will be zero because we want to, by default, uh, add rather than remove. But this script can basically be built to do either. So our input name is add or remove, our keys are add or remove, our values are true or false, and our default index is zero. So that would be that point. So before you feed this into the main user interface, what you need to do is create a list and then feed that into the inputs. So we use list create. And you want to feed them through in the order that they show up in your UI itself. So we want to see our revision selector, our sheet selector, and our radio buttons. And that will also be the order they come out in your user inputs or your outputs from your UI. Because what this, this script will essentially do is hold up the scripts and wait for these inputs. It'll run the script to this point. So you can actually put multiple input stages into these scripts using this package. So it's really powerful. But we'll put in the inputs. So description optional is basically the big text at the top of the UI. So this one here. Um, typically it's good to have one so people know what the script is meant to be doing. So, visions to shoots. 
Um, so logo is an interesting one. You can actually embed a logo in here. And if it has an alpha channel, you can actually get it to uh, hide its background and give way to the gray behind in the UI, which is really cool. So what we'll do is I'll just bring in my, my logo in this case, um, which I've built in Photoshop and I've taken out the background layer. So once this loads, we'll feed that in to our logo and you just feed the file path into this one. You don't have to feed in the file from path. Um, button text uh, is optional. Basically that's what the run button will say. I usually like to make it say something like run script so that people understand once they press this, that's what will happen. Um, again, you could put these on all into a code block if you wanted to, to make it cleaner. Um, toggle is basically something you can use while you're playing with the script to basically reset the interface. So by default, it's good to make it true. And if you ever want to rerun the interface, you need to run it in false and then rerun it in true. And that will reset the interface. You can actually link to a help file as well, which is quite interesting. So we can just link this to my logo for now. Obviously my logo is not a very helpful file to help someone, but it's just an example of what sort of file you could link up. You can also link in a cancel button as well. So by default, the cancel button is just the cross in the corner, but you can also have a more descriptive cancel button next to the run button. And I prefer to do that so the user has more understanding of what's happening. Then we want to have a maximum height. In this case, I'm just going to make it 900 high by 500 wide. Um, but you may need to play with that to figure out what your optimal, optimal thing is. So maximum height basically is how high will it be before it hits a scroll bar for the whole script itself. So that is pretty much the building portion of the UI. So at this point, we'll actually run the script so I can show you what the UI actually looks like at this point that we've reached. So if I run this, it's gonna collect all the revisions, the sheets, and take all this data and build the UI out of this. Uh, at the moment, I think we need to, there we go. So you can see this has just come through here. So at the moment, I probably need to reopen the script because I think it's probably struggling to process this data. Ah, I need to set run it here, sorry, that's why. So it's always good to pay pay mind to what your scripts are telling you they need as inputs and outputs. So I'll just reset that UI in this case. Usually it's easier to just reopen the script itself to reset the UI rather than toggle true false, because that gives you a hard reset. I think if I run this again, there we go. So there's our revisions. Our sheets aren't quite coming through at the moment. We've hit a stack value, so I'll just double check where that stack value is coming from. So we've got uh, list combine. Ah, I see, we haven't fed through the list combine properly. So what our keys actually need to be is this. That would be the problem. Okay, so we'll just reset the UI again. So I didn't feed through the combined list, I fed through the function, um, which wasn't correct. Now if I run this, there we go. So you can see that this is all working now. So we've got our revisions as a dropdown and we can only pick one. We've got combo boxes for our sheets and you can see that scroll bars if you needed them. There's also a selector or a selector none that comes by default, which is great. And you can either add or remove revisions. So if I run this at the moment, what will happen at this point is the UI will output a few things. It will say whether it was run, was it canceled, and then it will also say what your inputs are. So you'll see that our, our, our inputs are more like outputs in this case, I'd say. So what's gonna happen here is that we've got a list. So our first item is our revision we've selected. Our second item is a list of sheets we've picked. And our third item is whether or not it's adding or removing. So now we need to actually get to these nodes as well. So we're gonna need to do some get item at index nodes in order to collect this data. So we need to get our revision, our sheets, and also whether we had a true or false. And we're gonna just get the indexes of each of those just as a code block. So we feed all our inputs up there and then we get all our items respectively. So let's deal with our revision first. So our revision is easy. So all we need to do for this is say that, uh, actually we're gonna do a list map, that's right. So we're actually gonna have to have to add a if function in order to know how we will apply the sheets themselves. So, but we're gonna take our revisions, or our or revision in this case, and we're gonna to have to do an if node. And we're gonna use the zebra if node. And we're basically go, going to be testing this. And if it's true, we're adding. 
if it's false, we're taking away. And we're basically mapping whichever function is true in those cases. We need to also add a Boolean so that we can run the functions. So we're not gonna make that mistake again. And the sheets will basically be what gets fed into the list. So in this case, we want our list of sheets. So at this point, the script should work. So if I just go new and reset the interface again, and I run the script, our user interface should show up, which it has. In this case, it's selecting plans each time for some reason. I might have to check why that's happening. Ideally, it should select none. But let's just say we want to apply revision five to sheets one, two, and three in this case, and we'll just add them. So we run the scripts. Our data should process through and add to those selected sheets. So if I go to sheet one or two or three, you'll see that it's added revision five. Um, so extremely powerful of a script. Um, I've built a cleaner version of the script uh, beyond the point we reached here. Um, just as a sample, I've sort of packaged it a bit differently just so people can understand the steps that it's running through. So I usually collect my data in the green section, build my UI in this area, build my overall UI here, and then I collect all the data and process it in this node instead. Uh, but ultimately it's the same thing. And what you can do from here is actually run this in Dynamo Player. So if I open up Dynamo Player, then you'll see that it's more or less going to run the same way, but it just gives you a play button and a, a toolkit of scripts to work with instead. Similar to how Dynamo Player would usually work, but instead you don't have to worry about the inputs in Dynamo Player. All you're doing is just searching for the actual script itself. So if I go to demo, rev, that's where my script is. And we just run this finished sample. Or the one we built, or the one would do the same thing. Sometimes the UI can take a little bit of time to boot up the first time around, but I find after that it's quite quick. And every time this reruns, it resets the user interface as well. So you can run it multiple times. Let's just say we want to add revision four to all of those sheets. And we'll run the script very quick. And you'll see that now revision four is in all those sheets. And if we run it again, we can actually remove revisions as well. So we can say revision four is no longer needed on any of these sheets run the scripts, and there you are, revision four is removed. So an extremely powerful and adaptable script and an extremely powerful way of working as well. So just um, keep user interface nodes in mind. Um, they've really changed how I approach my scripting and I'm sure that will help you as well. Um, so we've finished the tutorial for today, so hopefully you've learned something. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below or any suggestions, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Um, feel free to follow or subscribe if you like what you're seeing and hopefully see you next time. Thanks, take care, bye.